Well, hey, let's jump into SketchUp. And what version are you using? Uh, I'm using the latest free version. Okay, so I, I'm I'm backwards. I'm I'm only going to use version eight. So you'll have some buttons and stuff. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and, and get going here. So and I I think I've got my my rendering program plugged in. So you'll see the plugins. We won't even get into this. Okay. Um, but I, I, we're just going to go. I'm going to keep it as simple as possible. Do you have a copy of? Uh, the image that I sent to you that has all my red marks and stuff on it. Yeah. Okay. For the sake of this, I'm going to assume you're looking at that instead of sharing it on the screen. Uh, yeah. I'm going to put it in the video in post process. Okay. So the first thing that, that I did after I found that image and, and kind of got some interest on Facebook was I said, okay, it's not going to take me but 10, 15 minutes to go through this and establish some dimensional criteria. Okay. Now, granted, I get to approach this as an architect, which is probably a whole lot easier yeah. uh, since I deal with these types of dimensions day in and day out. So when you look at the sheet, you're going to see I've gone basically from the floor all the way up to the top. Oh, and I've I see. identified each one of those dimensions. Now, is it perfect? No. I'm eyeballing it. I'm taking 15 minutes from a JPEG that I can't really even count bricks on. Yeah, and we'll, we'll turn that term that modeler's license. <laughs> yeah. And so if you want to get into, I'll just throw this out there, the serious prototyping, and I know guys do it, mm -hmm. you're going to take a whole bunch of pictures and you're going to pull a whole bunch of dimensions. Mm -hmm. And I do that for, for preservation work that I work on as well. Oh, okay. So we'll just assume that, that the dimensions I have shown here are fairly accurate for the sake of our model today. Sure. Okay. So I'm just going to go into my standard view in SketchUp here. Um, I've opened up to make it a little bit easier and, and deleted the little guy that pops up. And we're going to start with a simple rectangle. Sure. Okay. And I drop it right on the origin. And up on the blue axis. And you'll see the rectangle starts to get formed. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you see the dimensions tab. Yeah. The first dimension is going to be along the red axis. And the second dimension is going to be along the blue axis because that's the, the plane I'm drawing my triangle in. Okay. Okay. So if you look at my sheet, what I've determined is that we've got 17 foot, four inches wide and 34 feet tall. So I'm just going to, by default, it'll automatically, once I start typing, put numbers in to that dimension box mm -hmm. and create this rectangle. So I'm going to say 17 foot, four, comma, 34 feet. Boom. So I have basically just created what we're going to call is the, the front of our building with no detail whatsoever. Okay. But it is in the three dimensional plane. It's not lying flat on the ground. Yeah. Red and green is X and Y and blue is Z. Okay. That's going to be the default always for SketchUp unless you get in and change it and make it different. Don't now, real that. quick, I'm going to go into window, model info, units. My, my default is architectural because I'm an architect. Yeah. And I've got my precision set as 16th of an inch. Okay. okay. So it's basically going to work as if a 16th of an inch is the smallest unit that I have. Okay. So that's just in, in case people are following along and you push this video out there, these are the units that I'm working in for this model. Okay. Okay, so now the first thing that, that I like to explain to people when they're new to SketchUp or even some that have a little bit of experience, if you've never worked in groups, you've got to start working with groups. And in this particular model, what you're really looking at is probably a masonry group, like the main facade, oh. a cornice group for that top parapet cornice that we're going to work with, and then maybe a windows and maybe a doors and maybe a lights. Oh, okay. If you set everything up as groups, then you can individually edit them without affecting other pieces. Ah. Okay, so just as an example, we're going to double click on this and you'll see everything turns blue. Yeah. The plane turns blue, all the bounding box turns blue. Right click, make group, and you'll see that the, the hatch goes away. So oh, now okay. if I click outside of it, it's just regular black and white box, but if I click it, the whole thing is highlighted. 
Now to edit that box, I have to double click it. You'll see a, a dotted bounding box. Now I'm within that group. Mm. Okay. So now I know the limitations of shapeways in terms of the, the thinness of the material and how the details print. Yeah. So there's no reason for me to create a one foot thick wall. Um, because I know that that really doesn't translate to the thinnest material I can print in shapeways and actually print successfully through their checks process. What I've kind of discovered is that between an inch and a half and three inches is what you need to work with for a single plane. So for the sake of argument, we're just going to stick with three for today. Okay. I've, come up here, I've selected the extrude button, push pull. Mm -hmm. You see, I haven't clicked anything. I just highlight the face because I'm within the group. Yep. Okay. Now, you, I hit control. And you yep. see that little plus pop up? Yep. You need to do that because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is when I, I'm going to click on this face, hold the button down, and I'm going to pull it toward me. Yep. And then I, I keep the button held down. In the bottom right-hand corner, I have that distance button again. Mm. Okay. I'm just going to hit three, enter. Okay. I'm all about the precision side of things. I don't like to guesstimate when I'm modeling. So now I have a three inch thick wall. That's the part that I, that really destroyed me was this guessing part. And I try to find out where to put the, you know, it's, it's just a process you have to see before you do. Well, all right. <laughs> in, in the, the default in this distance button, you don't have to go down and type in it as the default. You can just type your numbers. Oh, okay. For inches, you don't have to type the inches sign. Just type 3, 6, 9, 12, 24, 57, however many inches you want oh. and hit enter. While you're pressing the control button and pulling, you press 3 and it goes. Yeah, what I do is I, I work with the mouse, obviously, my right hand. The left hand is kind of my 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 guide on the keyboard. Yeah. So if I hit control Z, undo that, okay? And everybody's got a little bit different way on how they rotate. I use the middle button for everything in SketchUp. You just got to get in and find out how that works easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I might twist and, and turn and rotate things a little bit quicker than you used to, but that's just me practicing all the time. But that's okay? a great so, yeah. tip, and that's probably what you're doing if it happens too quick for you to see. <laughs> right. But the, the biggest tip I want to point out, well, here, I'll just I'll, I'll do this without hitting the control button, and I'm just going to extrude that out, okay? Mm -hmm. As I start uh, pushing and pulling this, It'll, it'll leave voids inside this box. This is a box of surfaces, not a solid. Yeah. Okay, so if I, del if I click on that and I hit delete, you'll see it's, it's void inside. Yeah. Okay, so as SketchUp models, it's thinking in surfaces, not solids necessarily. Yeah. So one of the things I just try and remember is hit that control button after you hit push-pull, mm -hmm. control. That... For the way I use SketchUp, that makes it remember that it's a solid. Mm. So as you get into adding and in, in, in pushing and pulling more details, you're pushing and pulling things through a solid. Mm. Okay. But that's just a, a tip that I've learned through modeling and having some problems with some renderings. Perfect. That for Shapeways, it becomes critical because Shapeways wants to read a solid. Yeah. Okay. So three inches is where we're at now. I have a face here within this model that still is independent at all the edges. So I could delete an edge and, and mess things up, but we're not going to do that. Now, the other key for what we're working with, we're going to set up our guidelines here today. Sure. Okay, so we're going to hit the tape measure tool, and we're going to click on the bottom. And you see how as I come up, I've got that dashed line? Yeah. It's not measuring anything. But again, my default with the, the length distance bar, my first item that I have off the floor is the base. And I have it set at one foot four inches or 16 inches. So I type 16, done. I have a guideline 16 inches off the floor. My second one is at two feet. Again, I'm clicking the base. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say 24 inches, done. And my third one is the door head at eight feet. Clicking the base, 96, done. Okay. Now, I can click on those two. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so we'll stick with the base today. Yeah. Okay. The top of the trim in our image is at 10 feet. So I hit yeah. 10, plug the foot sign in instead of hitting 120 inches. Now we're getting beyond 
just simple inches. Okay, the next one was the sill for the second floor windows is at 12 feet. The next one was the head for those windows at 18 feet, 8 inches. Yep. So 18 feet, 8. Okay, the next one was the sill for the third floor windows at 22 feet, 8. And the head for those windows at 28 feet, 8. You see, I'm just typing everything down that bottom right-hand corner as I go here. Yeah. So real quickly, you see, all I'm doing is putting layout guidelines within my group. Okay, and then the next one was 30. I'm, I'm trying to point to my image here. So you see me go down <laughs> off to the left. That's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to come real the top down since my cornice line was at 31. I'm just going to come down three feet for 36. Yep. So that last three feet up here is just a guideline for me within this total wall plane. Mm -hmm. of where I'm going to build my cornice. Yeah. Okay. Now, you'll see at the bottom of my image here, I've got three foot four in from each side. So I'm going to take the side and I'm going to come in three foot four from the right. Let's make sure I grab this one. Three foot four from the left. Okay. I'll actually see if I can't orient this somewhat like we've got our image. So if you're sharing the image, you're going to kind of see um, that what we've modeled here in a flat plane is just like the, the image that we're looking at mm -hmm. in the JPEG. Okay, so what I've got is I've got a section here at the bottom that will be our three doors, a little section here that's the that wood uh, door head trim. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't plugged the windows in yet. No. Okay. Now, what I did, you can see the, the two windows on the second floor are just a little bit wider and a little bit taller than those third floor windows. Yeah. Okay. So we can make some assumptions, but I'm going to do some stuff here with this bottom just to go ahead and show you how we can, can start developing the holes in this wall real quick. Okay. okay so now I have, excuse me, I have my guidelines. I'm going to click the rectangle. I'm going to go from the bottom left here up to the top right of what we're looking at in the image as what I've defined as the doors mm -hmm. okay? and just draw a rectangle. We know for a fact that that thing is 10 feet wide and eight feet tall based on our guidelines and SketchUp likes to snap to guidelines. Good. Okay. So I come up here. I just click, click that to make sure I get out sometimes. Okay. Push pull. See how we're two separate now? Yeah. Now I take this one and 90% of the time it's going to limit your distance to the thickness of the material. See that pop up? Yeah. So I can push it out, but I can push it in. I don't have to type three. It automatically limits it. Let go of the, the I clicked the left hand button to push in, let go. Once I hit the three inch limit and now I've got my hole in the bottom. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you modeling this with me? No, I'm just watching now. <laughs> oh, well then I'll go a little bit quicker. Yeah, it's good. Okay, so now you'll see in the image, if I just go up to the windows, it looks like I've got what I'll say is an 8 to 12 inch band around that second floor set of windows that's an accent in the brick. Yeah. And it's inset from the right side on each side here. Mm -hmm. I just kind of like to draw a line straight up and down. So I'm going to come here, grab that. I'm just going to say 8 from each side. So this is setting the boundary of that window opening. Yeah. Okay. Now you see how, remember before I tried to grab that dashed line and it didn't do it? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't offset? Well, now this side's going to do it. Oh, okay. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm in eight inches right here. Yeah. Okay, and I'm going to offset this. I've determined these windows are approximately three foot by six foot eight. So 36, 36, boom. Okay, so now I've got this opening here and this opening here that form the two windows. Mm -hmm. on the second floor because we know this is that headline that we created with our earlier step. So again, mm -hmm. rectangle, rectangle, come up here, push, pull. I'll hit three just to be safe. If, when it says on face, for those that aren't familiar with modeling, it's reading the back face of this plane right now. Oh. Okay. But sometimes, you won't see anything you'll push. You think you're even, Yeah. but nothing disappears. It actually pushes through the back of the wall and creates an object on the back side of the wall. Mm. Okay. 
Now, I don't need a couple of guidelines here anymore. I don't need this okay. one, so I'm going to delete that, and I don't need that one, okay? Because they don't line up with what I have above. But this yeah. one here does because oh, okay. the windows up top are a little smaller. Mm -hmm. I've determined those windows are two foot eight wide. Okay, so 32 here. Which is important to pre-plan these structures uh, the way you have it pre-planned. And it's like uh, when I show it in the video, I'm going to show how you've planned this on paper before. Well, yeah, and this is this is just a, a quick step that I did on paper because I, I just want to generate or I want to see how much interest was potentially generated in walking through this process. Mm hmm. Okay, so I, I've created the outside two windows on the third floor, but what dimensions should I use for the inside? Well, I'm going to assume it's eight for right now. So I'm offset eight. Okay. And now you can see what I've got here. Now I can actually measure that. It's two foot eight. Just so happens that it's the exact dimension as the other three. Okay, this is where I have an advantage being an architect. I can typically look at most buildings and guess pretty close. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so now exact same process. All I'm doing is drawing rectangles. Yeah. Okay, and remember, I'm with I'm within the group here. Yeah. Okay, I'm not outside in the total modeling world. I'm specifically modeling in just this plane. Yeah. Okay, so let's get rid of these. I'm used to working a little bit closer into my model, so I'm, I'm trying to keep everything zoomed <laughs> out so that everybody can kind of see the whole thing at one time. Uh huh. Okay, so now I've got within what? What are we? Ten minutes in here? Yeah. I've got the front masonry plane. I've got an accurate opening here in the base. I've got two accurate, close to accurate windows here, and three up here. Yeah. Okay, if this was a if this was a wood building, this would be all you need for your your uh, back back your serial board, you know, to put in a laser cutter, so to speak. Yes, and that's you know, I I met with the met. I emailed a gentleman, and I forget his name now. I was trying to get some some stone stuff done in whatever the laser cutting material is that that print circuit board that they're using for that. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, whatever the real thin stuff is, I thought, well, I'll just have somebody start engraving this stuff and see how it works. But apparently that's a pretty labor-intensive process. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know enough about that it, side of it. I could work in AutoCAD every day. <laughs> it's more of no. about the owner, not the machine. Some, some people are real uh, finicky about certain processes and stuff like that. And I, I found that some manufacturers with their lasers just don't care. They'll just let her run. <laughs> yeah, and that's you know there there may be part of this process that you actually know much more in depth than I do. Just always remember that that Jason is an architect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who it's knows a model, but really doesn't know squat about how I can potentially bring this to the modeling community. Mm -hmm. Now no, got, I've done some research with Shapeways to know you know, kind of the thickness so that I know that when I send this off to print, I'm not going to end up with a bunch of fails. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. So, so I'll just, I'll spin around here real quick. This is one of those things that came up in Ed's video about surfaces. Yeah. Uh, like if I just click on it once, I'm going to get the whole object. Cause okay? it's not an individual face. I got to double click it to yeah. get inside. If it was ungrouped, it would just pick that back side of the wall as a plane. Exactly. Just like I've done within the group here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now here's just to explain this real quick. I'm just going to real quick draw something else. I got a simple box here. Yeah. Okay. Again, empty, I'm going to group, group it. So now I've got one group here, one group here, totally independent of each other. Yeah. Okay. So I can get in, I can edit this, the other one grays out. Yeah. Get in, this one grays out. It's just a it's so helpful yeah. when you're working at the level of detail that, that I see people being able to go to. Yeah. What we're just doing right here. And the complexity of this drawing just went like like with it, you with with the wall and all its uh guidelines and stuff like that, that's gone when you pick the pick the box. So this drawing really, you know. Grouping this stuff really helps with uh, not making it a big mess of everything, you know? Yeah. Right. Well, let's 
I'll just let's we'll just jump right into where this becomes really applicable for what we're doing. I'm going to zoom into the top here, stay as far out as I can, so you still have the context of the windows. Yeah, I'm just clicking on the outside to make sure I'm not within the group. Okay, sure. now there's there's a couple of ways that we create this cornice, and I, I'm going to do it the fast and simple way. Okay, just so that people can see how easy it can be to model in SketchUp. Yeah. I okay. have a feeling I know what you're going to do. You know exactly what I'm going to do because uh, Ed used a very similar process with his tire. Yeah. Okay. Now, on my drawing, I've, I've, I've looked at the cornice and I said, you know what? I'm going to take Design Liberty and I'm going to profile this parapet because I'm really not worried about being exact here. Yeah, I'm not developing some prototype model that, you know, I'm trying to hit the masses with that are going to pay one hundred and fifty dollars for this model. Yeah, I'm more interested in developing a storefront that that we can kick out the door here for, you know, 20, 30 bucks. Yeah, that people can then build the other three walls any way they want or use as a backdrop building. We're helping people uh, jumpstart a skill set. Right. Okay, so I've clicked on the top corner because this is top of my parapet. I'm going to come out just for grins here, 18 inches, because I'm pretty sure that's beyond what I've got here for my parapet. I'm just creating a box to work with oh. in the third plane. You see I was along the x-axis. I'm yeah. not going yeah. down. Okay, so now I'm going to go down on the blue axis, 36. I know my parapet's 36. And I'm going to come back. Green, it'll snap to. It'll typically always snap to red green and blue mm -hmm. okay. but you see it didn't fill in no because you didn't do that last line right right because i'm not within the group now it's filled in i see okay so now what i can do is i'm gonna double click this you see it only highlights what i've just drawn here yeah and this is what i want people to to see if you're methodical about your modeling process then you can eliminate a lot of the hurdles people run into by getting into a complex model yeah and just not knowing how to edit it because you've been drawing for an hour hour and a half two hours and you're like oh my gosh i just want to change one small thing are you kidding yeah. me so many things are interconnected that you don't want them to be right so i'm going to make this a group its own group yeah its own group it's nothing but a rectangle yeah but we want to model the parapet so let's get in now i'm within the group and I'm going to start at the bottom, and you'll see in my little section, I, I've only indicated a couple of dimensions. Um, so I'm just going to kind of talk and draw through this. We may change some stuff. It may be perfect when I'm done here. I haven't done this part yet um, to test it out. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. So I'm looking at what I've drawn. I've got 8, 12, 8, and 8, which adds up to 36 inches. And I haven't given any dimensions to these pushes and pulls. But we're going to say, eh, let's come out an inch. Um, Let's go. Keep in mind, I'm, I'm on the green, red, and blue, so it should always be green and blue in this particular case based on the yeah. plane I'm in. Okay. And there'll be somebody out there that'll say, well, how can you just don't orient your, your axes with that particular face? Yeah, you can do that. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Yeah. So that people aren't having to worry about X, Y, and Z all the time. It's Once good for their sketch up, they can get into that and mess with that to even get more precise. But I'm going to come up an inch. Let's say the next bump out is an inch out, and let's come up. I've got eight to work with, so let's come up two inches, and we're going to bump out one more time. So I had eight inches, right? Well, mm -hmm. I've got I've got a little slant I want to put on this, so we're going to come up four, and I'm just oops, don't want that. So I hit I hit control and get out of that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just drawing a guideline there. Yeah. Okay, and then I want this little slant to be, let's say we want to come back two steps. So I'm going to come up. I'm just going to kind of draw a guideline in here and see it. See how it stays um, darker? Yeah. Those lines are darker. It's because it's not a closed object, whereas yeah, these right. lines have closed in a face. Unconnected, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to come up an inch off of that, and I'm going to come down here, select that. There's my angle. Yeah, I hit space bar to get back to my pointer. Okay. I want, and then I click on it, and then I hit the delete key. I just like to keep things clean while I'm drawing if I can. Yeah. Okay. So now here we go. I've got that built. Let's come up 12 inches because that's what I saved for this middle section here. You see how that little 
piece popped up. Now I've got an endpoint to click that's 12 inches off the bottom. Yeah. But I'll measure it just to make sure I didn't mess something up. Look in the bottom right hand corner. It says one foot. It says one foot at the end of my tape measure. Yeah. Okay. Hit the, the space bar to get out of the tape measure command. I think you hit L for line. Okay. So now I've got the top part of the parapet in my image. I want to come out. We'll say two inches with this one. You'll see how I come out and it automatically yeah. lines me up at the bottom. I love that. Got to take advantage of that stuff. Okay. We're going to come up an inch. Come out another inch. Now I've got my circle, and in my drawing, I said, you know what? That's a six-inch radius, so let's come up six inches. Okay. Um, six inch hit the space bar to get out of it. I'm going to come over here to my circle. See how I'm already – I've got this – the key is having this plane drawn because the circle likes to snap to yeah. the plane. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm working in. I'm doing this wrong. Oh, I need to come – I'm sorry. I need to come out six inches. That's where I want my circle to start. I just want to point out the noob said that. <laughs> did, I, did I messed up? <laughs> I said, and then go out six inches <laughs> asking the question. Oh, you said that? Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not. I'm trying to talk and draw at the same time. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> I got to boost myself up somehow. That's yeah. It's perfect for you. Now, see how this is connected? Oh, wow. Okay, I can just delete that. I don't need that, right? Look at that. <clears throat> all I want is the profile. So now I'm at the top of my cornice. I want to come up. Um, let's just say that's an inch for right now. Yeah. Um, add another inch. And I have no idea what's left, but that's kind of what my profile draws. So let's see if I was even remotely closer to the eight as I was drawing away. Look at that, eight inches. Okay. Pro. Pro. <laughs> I get lucky sometimes too. So I can erase all these that I don't need now, right? Yep, basic house oh, cleaning. Don't hold on to stuff that you aren't going to use. Yeah. Okay. Now, for the for the sake of our modeling session today, I'm just going to leave this as the profile. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete because you know where I'm going next. Yeah. Okay. I'm still in my group, right? Yeah. I'll flip it around to this side because it's easier for me to pull than it is to push. I need a guideline. Okay. And I'm going to use the follow me tool. Yeah, but the follow me does not like to try and find objects outside of the current object you're in when you're using groups. Mm. Oh, that's okay. I've kept it simple, right? So I'm just going to draw a line across the top of the. See how my bounding box just got real big for my group? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to go in tools, follow me, and as soon as I just I haven't clicked anything, but I, I highlight over that. Yeah, I always try and click somewhat close to the line or the path is a better description oh. of what I'm going to follow. Yeah, as opposed okay, to the I'm bottom. Left click. Mm -hmm. Okay, first I'm going to hit control. Left click. See how it's making it hollow? It's magic. Done. <laughs> okay. Now that is, I'm just clicking outside. So if I if I try and get over here again to where we were at, this is basically the image you're looking at on our JPEG. Wow. Okay. Tell me how much different that is right there from what we've started with with a picture. Is it's the same thing without the texture of the brick. Exactly. Okay. So w what I thought was the best part of what SketchUp has to offer is anybody. Honestly, Ron, can get to this point. Yeah. Anybody. Yeah. This is the easy part. Yeah. And for those that are modeling concrete that don't want to cut stuff out of styrene or chipboard or balsa or basswood, mm -hmm. that would prefer to delve into this digital modeling world and get to this kind of point. Yeah. And they can send this off and for 20 bucks, everything's it's going to be precise. Mm -hmm. And they could send this off, and quite frankly, they they could get this back. I don't know what this is going to cost, and we can we can run this into Shapeways and see what it's going to cost. But I'm guessing it's probably 15, 20 bucks. I haven't really edited out or made anything else hollow at this point. Well, I'd just like to point out what I would probably do 
at this point, I'd probably send the face of the wall to my buddy over at Imagine That Laser Art to cut this out on the laser and then send the cornice to Shapeways. And because you've got it grouped as two different things, I'd probably be able to do that. Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> No, you could do that because, and I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm committing my cardinal sin by not saving a bunch of stuff and, you know, saving through each process of the step. I just, if we lose it, we lose it. So I guess I better save it, huh? Yes. We should always save it if we start talking about saving. Okay. So we're going to go to, I've got a, I've got a folder on my desktop modeling with Ron. And we're just going to call this masonry one. Okay. So now we're saved. Um, so if something goes wrong, you know, hopefully we'll be able to recover it. Yeah. Okay. So the great thing here is now I can get in and, and work on these independently. If I don't want to deal with this, I right click on it, hide it. I'm done. I, I don't want to mess with that while I'm working with my masonry. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want it back, unhide all, uh, you have to go up to the file menu to find it. Unhide. You can do selected last or all. Well, if it's not, if it's hidden, it's not going to be selected. I still haven't figured that command out. So anybody else using schedule, <laughs> can have to figure that out. But there it is. It's back. Yeah. Okay. Now, I will just share for those that that might be a little bit more advanced that do know how to work in groups, just in case they don't know. There is. I got to find it. Window. This this button right here called Outliner. Yeah. Okay. Basically, it's a drop down menu. It shows that I have two groups. If I want, I can rename this group because right now this is the name of the model that yeah. we're in. Yeah. Okay. So I could come in here and rename this brick wall. And I can rename this parapet. Can you also okay. give. Can you also give each one a different color in this? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure. I don't do that. No, but that's there, how There might be somebody else that knows how to do that. There, There is a layer option that separates things by color. Mm -hmm. I've honestly never used it. Okay. Well, that's what uh, laser cutters use because they have an etch burn and a cut burn. Right? Okay. Well, I think the way to do that would be to get into the layer dialog. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's just and for future. Add a layer, and and what you can do oh, is see right there, cut, yeah. etch, whatever it is. The, what you'll have to do though is say, well, let's just do this because it's that way you've got it for reference. Okay, I've got a new layer here. In case if I do, if I click on it, it kind of like other programs, it'll open up when you're creating a file name. Yeah, so we'll just call this uh, parapet. Click out of it. Okay, but this is not on the parapet layer. And the way I find out is I have it selected. I go to Window, Entity Info. It's going to tell me where it's at. It's on layer zero right now, but its name is parapet because that's the name I gave it over here in the outliner as a group. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here. And I'm going to put it on parapet layer. Okay. Okay, so now this one is on layer zero. This one is on the parapet. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, so if you want to set your model up to hide items so that you can export things for printing with a laser company, uh -huh. um, I'm sure there's probably ways to do that. And that's where I tried to work with this gentleman who does laser cutting, but I, I just wasn't understanding the process he was wanting me to do it. And he sent me a sample, and it turned out okay. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't really what I was wanting. And so I yeah. kind of moved on and... And that's when I started exploring Shapeways in more depth. I'm going to take this video to my buddy's house and we're going to watch it and figure out that part. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's where, you know, this this right here can now be probably pretty easily cut into oh, yeah. brick. A brick facade, a clapboard facade. Yeah. You know, that's – I'm not sure how that laser process works if they just use – if I need to draw stuff in – for the no. laser cutter to know how that works, but you tell me. It, no, let's continue on with what your with with your plan. We'll What's continue that? Continue on with we'll continue on with your plan because uh, that stuff is for way down the road. We've got so much three D coming down the pipe that we should just.
kind of stay basic. My ADD just kicked in there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to close these out because we're not really dealing with those. Yeah. And so now I've got the parapet in here. Um, I'm going to stay away from the windows today. And mm -hmm. here's, the, here's the only reason. I know there's a whole bunch of people out there, because I've looked, that make the, the resin cast windows. Yeah. And for a lot of people, I got to be honest, it may be more cost effective and a higher quality to just buy those yeah. than to try and have them printed unless you're truly needing something that's a pure custom. Yeah. And the only reason I say that is we're really limited on how thin we can make um, the window frames and the muttons um, yeah. before it starts getting too fragile. Yeah. And that's where the, the resin casting process still has a leg up on, on even the, the FUD printing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and, and again, I haven't, I, I'm not made of money, so I'm not, you know, creating a whole bunch of windows and sending them off to Shapeways to see, you know, which ones come back great and which ones don't. No, it's good advice to use uh, products that are cheap already. You know, Titchy or Grantline even too might have an opening that fits perfectly for that because it sounds like you use standard widths. 36. Yeah, and, and quite frankly, the laser cut windows beautiful. may be a better fit. I got a bunch right behind me. I painted them as we were talking this morning. Yeah, and so and so, if you start thinking of this in terms of, okay, well, now, now that I'm – Jason's shown how simple this can be, how do I plug the window into that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do we need to start thinking about how do we model in an edge along the backside that receives – no, you know, a pre-cut window or can you truly just glue it in? It's usually form fit. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, whatever the case may be, there, there's, there's some things that could be worked out with that. And also you paint these things. And when you get a paint that goes in that tight spot, that paint is a glue. Yes. So. Okay. So let's, um, let's jump back down here and we'll, we'll talk about uh, brick for a little bit. Actually, I'm I'm a I'm a backtrack. We're gonna we're gonna work on this header piece since it's kind of a a piece in and of itself. We're gonna get back into the group. See that I just one click yeah. highlights it. If I double click, I'm in, and that bounty box shows up. Okay, so I'm back to my rectangle command. Just gonna draw a rectangle since that's the overall mm -hmm. dimension. Okay, I'm not real sure. If that piece across the top, because I'm looking at a black and white picture, I didn't bring the color picture with me, yeah. is a, a piece of flashing or a piece of stone, but we're just going to take our tape measure tool and we're going to say, eh, that looks like that's about three inches, four inches. We're going to go three because I know that Shapeways works better when we stick with the three inch. Yeah. Now I'm going to draw that line across. Now I've got space bar, two different planes here. Okay. Well, this one comes out, right? Yeah. So we're just going to pull this out, hit control, see how it's moving. But I want to set dimension, and I'm just going to call it three inches for today. Don't know right. exactly what it is, but that's okay. Yeah. This one looks like it goes back a little bit. Mm-hmm. So we're going to take it, and we're going to push it back. But see, now it wants to leave that front face. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to push back, and we're just going to push back an inch for right now. Okay. I'm going to delete that. And you'll see that that face is still um, there, but yeah. it created another block in front. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just deleting some of these edges that it created. Oh, I see. So I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying, oops, trying to keep things clean. Yeah, house cleaning is important. Okay, and another, another tip, if you don't click on the model when you rotate and you click out here in paper space sometimes, the model will, will zoom out and go crazy on you. Okay. Yeah. I've got a blue face here, which means SketchUp is reading this one backwards because I pushed it away from me and it says this is the front. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. This was the front face, but remember it created two different objects. So we're just going to reverse that face. I always like to try and, and keep everything on the white side. And that's that's a rendering thing for me. If I render the back side of a face, it messes up my models. Mm-hmm. So, and that's, I just one of the things, that's one of the things that really bugged me while I was trying to learn SketchUp was all these different faces and how to get them all put together. So that was a good tip right there. Yeah, and so the backside I'll leave alone for right now um, because we're not rendering this model. 
so that's okay. And Shapeways won't read this any differently, but uh, some people like to do everything white or everything blue. Mm. So white, white is the front face, blue is the back face. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to do something here real quick just because I'm tired of zooming in and out of this thing all the time to get us back to our better view here. I'm going to set up a camera in angle. Oh, cool. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. In, in other programs. Yeah. Okay. The, the, an, the animation, um, view animation, add scene. Oh, cool. Okay. Nothing so fancy. We're just kind of seeing. Okay. So now I come over here. I'm going to look at the back. I'm going to zoom way. I'm going to come way out here. I'm going to come up here, click the button. Automatically brings me back to my scene. Uh, beauty. Okay? So say you want to work in your cornice a little bit more and you've got, you want to be able to detail this out a little bit as we get into that. Okay. View animation. Let's add another one. Come up here. Beauty. Um, Scene manager. I should be able to change the name. I forget. No description. Okay, I lied to you. It's all good. I bet you Ed will come. I don't up remember there. how to change the name. I, I just I typically set up scenes one through whatever as I'm doing renderings, and, I, yeah. and I've got to decide me on what's what. But I know I'm sure you can change that name. Ed might know exactly how to do that. He'll figure it out. Yeah. So see, now I've got I can bounce between these two for for global editing or parapet editing. Just a, it's just a handy tool so that in case you get lost in your model when your model's a lot bigger, yeah, you can snap back to where you want to work. Okay, but today let's let's look at one way that we can um, work on brick detail. Okay. Okay, and just for the sake of, of time, I'm not going to get into all the specific lines and details that are in this particular model. Yeah. I'm going to walk through the process, and then we're going to call it good for today, and then maybe we can come back and I can refocus on the actual bumps and details of, of how this particular model works in different segments. Cause this is where it's going to start taking a little bit more time yeah. to do it. But I, I just want to show real quick that, Hey, let's make some assumptions here. Okay. In the architectural world, a standard size brick is three bricks is eight inches tall. Okay. So nine bricks is 24 inches. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to get that detailed in this particular model for the, for, the, for this current video. I just want to show how we can put the mortar lines in. So we're going to go with, so that's like two and three eighths or five sixteenths inch tall with a three eighths, five sixteenths joint. But we're going to make it simple. We're going to start in the bottom corner. We're going to come up and, and we're not going to be arbitrary. We're going to use our box in the bottom right hand corner. We're going to come up 2.5. Mm -hmm. It leaves that mark. We're going to grab it. I want red. I want green. Okay, the red axis pulls towards me, so I'm going to go 0 0.5, 0 0.5, back out to the front, 2.5. See, it grabbed it automatically. If it grabs it automatically, work with it. Yeah. 2.5. Don't fight it. Exactly. Okay, so now within just this real 30 seconds, I've got three boxes within our group here. This is yeah. the mason group, so that's where it makes sense. Okay, so I just I click on it. Okay, push pull, <laughs> grab these through. Okay, granted, I'm not keep in mind we're not getting, I'm not worried about the the image anymore at this point. I'm just I'm showing how simple it is with push yeah. pull and the simple line tool and in dimensions. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I've got three rows, one, two, three rows of bricks. Okay, well standard brick width is going to be eight inches. Well. I'm not doing eight, eight, eight. I'm going to do seven and a half and a half inch mortar joint. Now, okay. The reason I'm using a half inch mortar joint, and this is trial and error. I haven't sent one of these off to shape ways to print yet, but when I calculate their minimum engraving detail, mm -hmm. when I'm working at full scale here, what I've determined is that a half an inch is about as far as I can go down. Mm -hmm. And have it be engraved. Because keep in mind, when we go to scale this, I got to scale this at one over eighty-seven. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm drawing full scale today. Yeah. But when we get our model ready for production, we're we're going to scale it down, and we're not going to do that today. We can do that another time. Yeah. But we're going to scale this whole model down by by one by H O scale. Mm. Okay. So you have to think about that when you're planning the detail side of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Back to our model. We're here, seven and a half. Okay, I got my line out there. Keep in mind, I'm following that blue axe. That's when I get it, right? Yeah. Okay, so I've got that one. I'm just going to go ahead and draw a couple here. Half an inch over. Let's do one more. And in the real world, our bricks aren't going to be perfectly stacked in a running bond. Typical brick application. So what's half of eight? Or so we're going to go three and a half over. Again, I gotta gotta keep in mind that joint I want in there. Mm -hmm. So now I'm creating. Oops. Now I, that was just for the first one. So now I'm I, I put type three point five in. I don't want that backspace. Get out of that seven point five. Right. I want to be yeah. all the way over here in the middle again. Oops. Didn't snap to the blue one and I caught it. And when you draw lines and you get up here and you start drawing quick, sometimes it'll it'll go off to the side and won't be quite perpendicular. Yeah. I'll mess your model up. Yeah, you gotta look for that stuff. You, you do have to look. And those that aren't used to modeling, see, like that one, I just didn't grab it, but I caught it. Yeah. See my my, my spot's there, but for some reason it grabbed there. And because I'm I'm so used to to looking at the computer screen while I draw, yeah, I can typically catch those things as soon as they happen. Sometimes, you know, you make mistakes. It happens. Okay, now I want to get one. I'm pointing at the screen thinking that you guys can see that, but you can't. I want to get one up in here so to finish our third row. So I come down here, grab that, right? Oh, Blue cool. Line. Right on. Don't, don't waste your time. Yeah. So come down, snapping, don't click on it. You're Just snapping snap to the guideline. Point. Yeah. yeah. Oh man! But okay. sometimes it wants to draw the line, and it doesn't want to cooperate because it's wanting to grab. There it goes. It's wanting to grab another part. So I'm just going to cheat because I'm tired of it not wanting to do what I want to do. Yeah, it's probably okay. getting too too far away down the perspective to to work. Okay, and then a habit that I'm in is I always when I get out of the command I always you know, hit the space bar, which puts me back to the pointer. Yeah. That way I'm not stuck in the middle of some other command and I inadvertently mess up my model. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to come over. I'm going to hit the push pull button and I already have this half inch recess back here. Right. So it should snap to that. Yep. Every one of these just snap right back to it. And cause I'm a little bit off trying to stay out, you know, I'm just going to, you guys are just going to have to bear with me for a second while I it's all good. Snap. Snap all these to it and stop trying to be considerate <laughs> and make sure you guys can see the whole model. Okay. All right. So now I've got, look at that. I got bricks now. That's profile, baby. Okay. Now, and there's one step beyond this that I just started investigating and that, that we're not going to go over today. I'm going to test it out a little bit more and, and see how it works because at HO scale and below, I, I'm not so sure it's going to make a huge difference, but yeah. it could. It's actually going to add a texture to the face of the brick by profiling it. Oh. Um, and it may be just enough that um, it keeps these from looking like these rigid, hard edges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I just don't know how Shapeways is going to print it. I think there's enough leeway that this will look pretty clean in Shapeways. Mm. And I think once people render it and paint it, you get a little bit of buildup on on this. I mean, look at any plastic model that you've purchased. And, and and this is this is what I've just modeled. It's only three rows of bricks. So you get that model out and you get your magnifying glass down and you look at how much detail is in that three rows of bricks. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure we need to go beyond this. No, no, no. For HR sure. scale. Now, if we get up to larger scales, and forgive me, I don't know all the scales in railroading because I'm an HO guy. I don't pay much attention to anything outside of it. But you get to larger scales, the realism gets to become more of an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Our so measurements would really work. To apply the mesh that I've got that's basically a plug-in to SketchUp that I select the faces, and it basically turns all the faces into a 3D mesh Okay. that has surface texture. And I can vary the surface texture as much as I want. But I'm going to run into limitations with Shapeways because mm -hmm. of their polygon count. And their file size. I think we're 60 meg file size. Yeah. Uh, something million, 60, 
two million polygons. I don't know, remember what it is. I think it's one point three or one point six, but whatever. Yeah. So I I want to keep it simple. So these are all simple rectangular faces that that I can sit here and, and what that take me about five minutes to do just that. Yeah, and just this to, is the tedious side of honestly the 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 digital modeling that mm -hmm. I I don't know how far people want to take it. Mm. And I can sit here. I, obviously, I have the capabilities of detailing this, and it didn't take me very long. I'm not guessing on how to do this, guys. I mean, I I know how to model. Yeah. So, okay. so I'm you really, for a second. You really I, can't I can, cut I can put scroll work, and I've modeled some crazy stuff for some preservation projects to get it, you know the government to sign off on spending money. Is it fast? No. No. It takes time. Um, and that's where I, I know that there was the comment made, and I agree with this wholeheartedly. You know, people should be paid um, for their efforts. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, but I, I kind of walk that fine line that you know what? This is actually something I really enjoy doing. I don't mind uh, doing stuff like this uh, on the, the hobby side, not to make a significant amount of money. I'm kind of like Ed. You know, I throw it up on Shapeways. I'm, he said, what, ten percent or something? Yeah. I, I don't know if I get 10 people to buy it at 10% and say this costs. Yeah, that's not what you did it for. 20 bucks. That's that's not what I'm in it for. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to be compensated for it. But honestly, I'd rather it be more of a barter type deal. Yeah. That's just me. Yeah. Well, I'd rather things just out there and have people appreciate it that, you know, yeah. someone goes to a GoFundMe site and says, hey, let's go fund me a, a laser kit for Jason Model and stuff. You know, I don't know how you do all that stuff, but. I'd rather I'd rather the hobby be more like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, for that's sure. just that's my personal take on it. I just I, my time is worth something. Next generation is taking guys, hold. Just give it a couple of years. Yeah, you guys can't afford me at my architectural rate. <laughs> yeah, I can't afford me. Yeah, but, but you can just see that you know if I if, and this is my plan. Honestly, Ron is to, is to take this model. To this level of detail, all the way across the face. So you can't copy and paste this because it just wouldn't work, would it? Um, no, I can't. Hold on a second. Let me let me save this real quick. Because that's what the 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 viewer is going to be saying at this point, right? Yep. We're 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 gonna we're gonna we're gonna go masonry two. Save. Okay. So now I've got my original masonry one, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get into my block here for a second. I'm going to mess some things up. Oh, I see. For the sake of messing some things up here. This is why we saved folks. <laughs> yep. Okay. I, you know, I, could, I could model all this again in five minutes if I wanted to. Okay, so here's the deal. Now I've got, I've got this. I don't. Okay, I've, I've double, triple clicked on this. You see how it grabs just that? Yeah, group. I still have the rest of this here, but just for the to address your specific point, I could I could have continued modeling these bricks all the way across. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna make a group. So now I have a group within a group, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just gonna click on that. I don't want to be inside it, right? I'm let's. I finished all this out. I've detailed it. Yeah. Uh, for the sake of your argument, these are yeah. cast cast stone blocks that are that actual dimension. Yeah. Edit. Copy or Control C. Edit, paste in place. Okay, so now I have two of these. I have a copy over a copy. Right over top of each other. Right over top of it. I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna click on the move command. Get in here to my model. I'm gonna click on a bottom point that I know is 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 a real point in space. It's on my model. Click. Yeah. Uh oh, what's going on? Yeah, you're pulling it up. Pulling it up. Where do I want to align it? Right there, because I've got my groove right. However, this would give more planes to the model. Uh, would we be able to clean that stuff up for Shapeways? Because doing this, I, it looks like it would uh, make the model more complicated. I, all I, but all I've done, honestly, is just added one. I've added one plane. Oh, I see. Okay. And it's a group within. Oh. That that's the only true plane I've really duplicated. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I see. So, for the, for the sake of shapeways, I mean, once this is all done, I mean, 
get that back down there. I, I mean, we can, I could group these together and make them one object. Yeah. Remember that, remember that entity outliner? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I can group this within a group. Yeah. And redo, I, or I can explode all this. Here, let's, well, let's do that. Let's, so now you've got two of these. Yeah. Let's explode that. So now it's all independent, right? Explode that. So now I've got all these individual faces, right? Well, yeah. Ron wants one block because Ron's lazier than I am. <laughs> right? So now oh, you just got rid of those. Oh, I see. Triple click, right click, make group. I'm sorry. I want to copy. Control C, edit, paste in place. Copy. I pasted it in place. Now I got it again, right? So now I'm, yeah. I mean, I just I can stack these all day long. Yeah. Okay. And that's where when when I sit down in the next session, I want to take a little bit of time before we sit down again. Yeah. I mean, I'm going on the fly here. Sure. You want to think about it. things that you're talking about. Perfect. But this this model is a little bit more complicated than that. When you look at the image, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. I've got a coin Q Q U O I N detail. It's just what yeah. they call it. Yeah. At that outside edge, it's about two foot wide that wraps both the corners. Yeah. That's a projection off the main wall of the masonry, which is really what this is. So I've got a coin that's two feet wide that projects out an inch. That's coming and then out. I've got yeah. that wrap around my windows. Mm hmm. Point here. I've got this brick wrap around my windows. On my image, that's that's a staggered piece. I got yeah. a couple couple rows that pop out. Some are flush. Pop out. Some are flush. Pop out. Some are flush. All the way around yeah. my window. There's a lot yeah. of detail associated with that. Uh huh. You know, it's not that it's not it's not difficult to model, but if you don't go into it with a plan, um, I'll just start. If I was to do it now without really having planned it out. I'd probably do some things that would mess my model up. I mean, yeah. I'm conscious about grouping, but that's all a group around the window because I only want to do one, right? Yeah. Why would I waste my time and draw the exact same thing twice? If I can do one of my bands around a window, yeah. and then I'm going to group that. Other. I'm just going to copy it right over here to the other one. Yeah. And the same with the top. You're going to copy it twice. I'm going to make those. one and copy it twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's there are other shortcuts that we can go over at another time. I won't I won't get into it on this segment about components. Yeah, I can create a component that if I have a component for this window per se. Say I just do this, but I create what we call a component. So it's going to include the brick cornice. It's going to include the window frames, and it's going to include we'll say a little latch detail for the inside because we're going to take it to that level. Cool. I group all those within a component, which is a group. Yeah, I copy it over here, and then I find out with doing research through a prototype. Oh my gosh, I screwed up the muttons. They're supposed to be twice as wide. I'd come in, double click into my component, which is a group. I edit it one time; it automatically updates the other one. No way. Yeah. So, but that's that's the planning side of SketchUp. Yeah. Okay. And then once you once you create all these things and you create groups and components, be smart. Mm -hmm. Save those things out mm -hmm. and reuse them again in other models. Yeah. There's no sense in modeling everything. I mean, we're going to detail this, and I'm going to get this thing as, as crazy freaking close as I can. Yeah. What we see in that image when we're all said and done. Yeah, and, and okay. that nice standard defined title for the group is important then, you know, instead of saying, you know, front window being FW. I just I create this as parapet one, and then I can modify parapet one over and over and over again. Yeah, I can and use it on another value. model. I can, I can make them squares. I can make them long rectangles. I can make it plain mm. for somebody to put their own detailing in. Awesome. So I mean, yeah, there's there's a a piece of this after you bring it up that you know maybe this is more of the the SketchUp component. Yeah. Is it, it's it's you know it's got these complex curves. Yeah. You know, and, and we can do them where this is a 45 and you just, you know, one end of the, the piece is 45 and the other one has an opposite 45 and they come in a set number of lengths so that every time you order the, the kit of cornices, you, you get a couple of 45s at the same time. Yeah. So that you can piece them together and then after that, you're kind of on your own. But, but then also, you know, if you're just doing these parapets in the print design, the more you make in that the the physical box of the 3D printer, the cheaper the print 
gets, doesn't it? Correct, right, because you pay that standard five dollar fee. Yeah. And then, and I've I've kind of figured out how to to sprue pieces together mm-hmm. so that they're one item, and that's the trick in Shapeways. You got to make it one item. You can't do individual items, or you pay that silly fee over and over and over. Again. Yeah, yeah. So that's so this, you just, this you just, is good that we can stop here or, or wherever we are, and then move on. You know, in a couple of weeks, you know, or a week, yeah. whatever is the time frame, and uh, move on to something else because. Or not move on to the next step after planning it because planning these models is really the important part, right? Well, it's it's you know for it's a lot easier for some some crazy guy like me that that understands the system than than somebody that's just working in SketchUp, and that's what I wanted to really show today. Mm-hmm. Is that hey, SketchUp is a powerful modeling tool. Yeah, but if you just open it up as a layman that that isn't using it within the industry like it was planned to be used, you could run into a lot of overwhelming complications real fast. Yeah, and that's what happened to me. I just dropped it. And another point I'd like to make is somebody's making this model for N scale, the tolerances that you started with at the beginning for three inch is not going to work. And that's then correct. also for O scale, you're not going to have to go three inch because uh, you're going to have a nice easier print on your hands. Yeah, what's what's O scale? Twice twice HO? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean basically if I'm limited to three inches now I can go or I'm limited to a half inch in my finest detail, I can go down to a quarter. Yeah. In the inch you know and a half respectively, yes. Yeah, so that that's the other thing that you're right. You gotta keep that in mind. When you're modeling, you need to understand the scale because in the real world, half inch would still work when you get up to the O scale. Mm-hmm brick and mortar, but I probably wouldn't take that mortar joint a full half inch deep. I'd only go a quarter inch deep. Yeah, fidelity. You know, it, it is in the level of detail you're trying to portray in your model. And some people, I've, I've seen some amazing things in weathering. Give them a flat piece of cardstock or plastic and they make it look like brick with nothing scored and etched into it at all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it just, I mean, there's just people out there with that kind of talent. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's people who are scared of modeling in the practical terms and would spend all day in SketchUp, and this this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? And that's where I'd like to give back to the community, you know, like saying, hey, what's a building that's of interest to you guys? Um, if I'm, if I'm going to get knee deep into something, it, it's going to accomplish two things for me, okay? Mm-hmm. It's, it's either – how do I get back to – the screen with with you right there why is it not yeah the green bar along okay. the top stops sharing yep there okay, you go so now I'm back okay so if I'm gonna get into developing models for the hobby it's got to it's got to meet two criteria it's either gonna be for me personally because yeah. I want it for my layout yeah or it should further the modeling community the interest that's out there for for certain building types. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm kind of approaching it the same way I approach my architecture. I, I'm not in it to. I'm in that profession to make money. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I'm not in it to hit the cover of every architectural magazine mm-hmm. uh, to win awards. That's not my goal. No, um, one or two would be nice. Great architecture. Yeah, and every now and then I get published. Yeah. Okay. So the same thing as the modeling community. I don't, I don't, I'm not in it for the accolades. I would rather people be able to take this and have learned something from it that helps them do some things on their own. And, and if they just, yeah, nope, Jason, you can take care of it. I don't need to be doing this modeling stuff. You've got it figured out. I'll just pay you, you know, to do this, model this building for me. You can't afford them. Well, it's just it, it's one of those deals that you know. There's there's the real world time where I got to make money, you know, and then there's the the, the hobby modeling time. Like I said, yeah. you know, it might be one of those. Yeah, I'll model that for you. I've been yeah. looking at this freight car for X number of months. I'd really like to have it for my layout. I'll tell you what, I don't care where you buy it, how you buy it. You send that to me, I'll model this for you. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'd rather it be kind of that barter type thing. That oh yeah. There, there's a value associated with with somebody's time, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know. And and if and if I'm bartering with somebody in the hobby, 
then there's much more of an appreciation. It's an equal value. If it costs you 35 bucks, you know, because I, you know, I kind of, I guess, have expensive tastes in freight cars, but I don't like the molded on stuff. I like the individual grab irons. And yeah. I bought a couple and I posted on modelers, HO model railroading or something. Hey, if I want high quality, where do I get it? And then I jumped online. I was like, yep, I figured that's about right. 30 to 50 bucks per car. Yeah. But I'm not interested in just rolling a few cars down the track. When they're sitting on my model, they need to match the quality of the model because that's the focus I have taken as a modeler. I'm not in it for the operations. And you guys can criticize my layout. I sent it to you because I wanted you to kind of see that plan on, hey, this is kind of where I'm at as a, a new guy in the hobby. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I told you, yeah, I'm doing plaster. I'm and I'm sticking to it. I am and I'm gonna be carving that stuff and staining and painting and washing and going through a lot of old school stuff. Yeah. You know, well, who is it? John Allen and you know, and uh, mm -hmm. some of those guys. If I don't hit that level of detail, I, why am I doing it? Because yeah. I love the hobby. I want it to be kind of a work of art. Yeah. And then yeah. there's other guys, no, just give me a rectangle that doesn't have anything on it. That represents a building. I'm all about the trains. They want the end game. Yeah. Yeah. And I get that. I, I mean, I have a, a tremendous respect and appreciation for that too. Yeah. But I'd like to be able to, to if there's a way to, to try and get this stuff into the hobby and you know, if that building that you posted on there that everybody kind of laughed at and I'll do it. It really, as you walk through this process, how much harder would that one be to do than what we just did? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're doing a great yeah. job at, at uh, representing or, or putting out a new skill. You know, this is uh, pretty awesome. Thank you. Oh, you bet, man. Let me um, let me dig into the windows and the brick and that kind of stuff and, and spend a little time because that, that is kind of another take this JPEG that I put together originally for you. Yeah. And then I'll put together another sketch and say, hey, here's how we do the window and the brick detailing side of it. And we'll spend maybe a 20-minute session on cool. you know doing a component and a block for just one window cool well like and, like i we did this morning i said i was recording a segment you know while you're yeah. going home i i've got content coming in every day and uh <laughs> so i'm not i'm not depending on you so don't don't rush you know this is this is a hobby <laughs> yeah I, I look forward to you know those guys like ed anybody else that's working in sketchup that says hey why don't you do it this way well probably because i didn't know how to do it yeah, yeah. In the same yeah. way backwards, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I expected, I'm, used I expected, to, I'm used to taking this building and, and getting it to the very first step we went to, and then I'll plug my windows and stuff in, but then I'm applying a brick JPEG that's detailed that you would never know it wasn't three-dimensional when I render it. Yeah, that's, yeah. So this is a this is a, a new level of detail that I'm, I'm actually pretty kind of excited about digging into. Um. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that I could do a whole lot more efficiently. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you very much, and you have a great day. Hey, you too. Appreciate it. Okay. We'll chat soon.